This is a work by Max Beckman, painted in 1934, a year after he had been dismissed from his professorship by the Nazis. The subject of this painting is playing children. But if we look at the work more carefully, we may discover some more ominous undercurrents. For example, most of the figures have their eyes closed. This girl to the left, her eyes are so tight shut, she's grimacing. Her friends on top of the seesaw, perhaps happy about the rise of fascism in Germany, too, are unwilling to look. And the adult armed with a pitchfork surveying the playing children, he is not looking. The girl on the far right, with her arms raised, facing a cross, is she praying? Is she raising her arms in fear? Is she asking, stop it? The only figure with her eyes wide open is this boy or dwarf in the very center of the work. But he is not observing the children playing. He seems to be looking into the far future. The sense of the ominous is reinforced by the claustrophobic space, the fence, the withering tree, the houses. In addition, we have these animals that add to this dark quality, this beast with a dark face, the dog that has been thrown violently on its back, and finally the donkey, oftentimes read as a symbol of evil. I would like to compare this work by Max Beckman with a painting by a Catalan painter responding to similar changes in his country. This is the personnage by the Catalan painter Joan Miró, done in 1935, a year after Beckman's. The large figure we see here, done in the colors of the Spanish state, clearly defined with a human breast. The figure doesn't represent a nurturing motherland. The mouth and teeth appear to be devouring this helpless figure that is dissolving into formless matter of tack, string, ball bearing, sand, and a splash of paint is a color of mud. Miro uses formal means to express his anxiety about the changing times, whereas Beckman preferred a more narrative approach. But both artists looked at their times with their eyes wide open. 